Hey guys, Free Marlow Chip here, also known as Free Chip on RC Groups. If you already watched my Spectrum DX9 programming for NASA Part 1 and Part 2, and the DX8 programming for NASA videos, then this is the next video in this series on how to program your Spectrum transmitter for use with NASA M flight controller. In this video, I'll be talking about the servo connections to and from the receiver and NASA M flight controller along with binding in preset failsafe required for use with NASA GPS and the return to home function. Okay, so let's get right into it. In order to utilize all of the NASA's features, you need at least a 7 channel receiver. On this setup, I'm using Spectrum's AR7600, a 7 channel DSM2 receiver. Before making your receiver to NASA connections, you're going to want to cut off these little plastic tabs off of one end in order to be able to connect them in your spectrum receiver. You can leave the other end with the tabs in to connect in your NASA flight controller. Once you cut off the tab off of one end of the wires that you need to connect your receiver to your NASA, you're going to want to connect your male to male leads in the following order. The four primary flight controls, throttle, aileron, elevator and rudder, are pretty simple to figure out. Next is the gear channel. In the previous videos we assigned the gear channel for our flight modes GPS, attitude and manual. So this needs to connect to your NASA U port. The receiver AUX1 will connect to your NASA X1. This is for gimbal tilt or remote gain. And the receiver AUX2 will connect to your NASA X2. This is for IOC or remote gain. There's two reasons for going with this order of connection. Number one, it keeps the wiring simple. And number two, it allows you to use the smallest possible receiver and still maintain all of NASA's flight control features. So now that we've made our receiver to NASA connections, we're almost ready to bind. But first, we're going to go ahead and prep our radio for binding. Okay, with the radio already turned on and on the model's main screen, we're going to go ahead and do a couple things. First, NASA recommends that for binding, you have the throttle stick above 10%. So we're going to go ahead and move the throttle stick above 10%. In this case, I like to use 25%. We're going to go ahead and do the next step, which is toggle your failsafe return home switch that we programmed earlier, which is switch H. Fail safe. On. Return home. So now that we've done this, our radio is pretty much ready to bind. So all we got to do now is access the bind menu. You're going to click the roller, scroll down to system, confirm your RF will be disabled, and scroll down to bind. We're going to go to bind. And at this point, we're ready to put the receiver into bind mode. So now it's time to bind our receiver to our radio. So what you're going to do now is insert your bind plug in the receiver's bind port. In my case, since I have a small collection of Spectrum radios, I'm going to be flying this model with different radios. So what I've done is instead of inserting a bind plug all the time I've installed a small switch and basically this little on off switch is connected in the bind port of my receiver and what it allows me to do is when I want to put the receiver in bind mode I just have to toggle the switch and to sort of mimic when you remove the bind plug I just have to turn off the switch Okay, so now it's time to bind. So go ahead and put your bind plug in your bind port. And in my case, I'm going to turn on my switch, which is basically a bind plug. With your bind plug inserted, you're going to go ahead and power the unit. So as you can see, my remote receiver is in bind mode. And so is my main receiver. In order for the NASA 
fail safe and return home function to work properly at this point you gotta put the spectrum receiver into what's called preset fail safe and to do this it requires you to remove the bind plug before binding the radio so in my case I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my switch which is just like removing your bind plug so with your radio already in the bind menu it's you can now go ahead and push the roller to put it in bind mode but make sure you give yourself quite a bit of distance between the transmitter and the receiver so I'm going to step away a little bit while we do the binding. Binding. DSM2 11 milliseconds 2048 resolution. So now that we're bound and you have a successful bind process, you'll see in the corner if you're running on DSM2 or DSMX. In this case with the AR7600 being a DSM2 receiver, we can see the DSM2 logo in the corner. And if we look at the receiver, the light is solid, meaning we got a, a good connection. And because we had put our radio into failsafe, the NASA uh, VU is uh, telling me that the unit's in failsafe. So we're going to go ahead and throttle down Timer stop. and toggle out of failsafe. Failsafe off. And we're going to turn off the unit for now. Now that we have successfully bound our transmitter to our receiver and our receiver is properly connected to our NASA flight controller, the next thing we need to do is connect our flight controller to the NASA assistant software. In my next Spectrum programming for NASA video, I'm going to show you every feature and settings you need to confirm in the NASA assistant software in order to properly set up the NASA to go with the programming that we've done in our radio. For more information, programming guide, and SPM file, please visit my website. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.